Hello, everyone. So uh, I'd like to invite Ashley for setup, and she's going to be talking about the incidence and effects of work-related musculoskeletal injury among ophthalmologists. So Ashley, come on up. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to Dr. Bellin for inviting me to speak here today. Um, so I'm Ashley Brissett. I'm an assistant professor of ophthalmology at Cornell in New York City. This is part of a project that I did in residency when I was at Queen's University. And I'd like to thank the following co-authors for their contributions to this work as well. Myself and the co-authors have no financial disclosures that are relevant to the presentation. So physical ergonomics encompasses physical anatomy, biomechanical characteristics that are related to activity. And these principles are extremely important in jobs that require repetitive tasks. MSK injury represents up to 30% of all work-related injuries across Canada, and those injuries often require disability compensation. The government thinks this is such an important topic that they actually have a repetitive injury awareness day. They try to focus on treatment, rather than focusing on treatment, they try to focus on preventative measures for work-related MSK injury. But despite the recognition and the importance of ergonomics in the workplace, and especially for long-term health, there's no formal requirement in the residency training about the importance of ergonomics among ophthalmologists. So we decided that a really proactive approach would be appropriate to prevent work-related MSK disorders, um, and this is essential for career longevity in ophthalmologists. So the American Academy uh, in 2010 compiled a panel of ophthalmologists and ergonomics experts, and they formed this ergonomics task force. And what they did is they had a two-part report in INET magazine, and then they also had an online module which ophthalmologists could access for CME credit. And what they did is they discussed the importance of ergonomics and ophthalmology. However, no such task force has been introduced into the Canadian Ophthalmology Society. And there's no formal component of ergonomics teaching among residency programs in Canada. At the TORIC ophthalmology course, which is the introductory course that all new Canadian residents attend before they start their formal ophthalmology training, there's no formal component of ergonomics. However, Dr. Kashif Beg, who has an interest in this field, does do a short talk at the end of one of his basic sciences discussions, but there's no formal teaching component on this topic. So to make recommendations on injury prevention, we first needed to identify the current literature on ergonomics and ophthalmology. So the purpose of our study was to do a systematic review of the literature, looking for any publication related to work-related MSK injury among ophthalmologists. And what we wanted to prove was that there was a relation between ergonomics and physician health, specifically in ophthalmology. And then the results of our systematic review would then be used to help direct an online educational module for ophthalmology residents. So multiple databases were searched over a six-month period in 2015, and literature references were also searched for any relevant publications and any published materials on this topic. Our inclusion criteria included studies evaluating work related to MSK injury, ophthalmology, and then any ergonomic practices that were specific to ophthalmology. We identified 11 publications, the majority of which were surveys among ophthalmologists. So the results of this study, self-reported MSK pain occurred in 50 to 80% of ophthalmologists across studies. The highest incidence of injury was in back pain, almost 40 to 80%, and then secondly in neck pain, about 32 to 69% of respondents. What was interesting is that almost 8% of ophthalmologists had to have surgery due to MSK pain, and almost 10% had to stop working due to chronic MSK pain or injury. And the incidence of MSK pain increased with longevity in practice, which really showed us that early intervention is key to promote um, this chronic injury in ophthalmology. So risk factors that were identified were force manipulation, so very focused manipulation during surgery and other procedures, awkward postures, this prolonged periods of sitting at the operating microscope and at the slit lamp microscope, and then lastly, repetitive tasks, so this very static workload of the same procedure over many, many years. Sources of, of MSK pain that were specific to ophthalmology were the OR microscope, the slit lamp microscope, any kind of laser procedure, procedures that require loops, and then lastly, the direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy. So publications on ergonomics and ophthalmology found high numbers of respondents suffered from work-related MSK pain. Some even reported loss of work performance and loss of income due to this chronic injury. So we recommend prevention to perform an ergonomics assessment of your workplace to identify any high-risk behaviors or any um, physical environment barriers that might be contributing. Regular exercise and resistance training can help prevent against chronic injury, being mindful of caseload and the workload, and then lastly, trying to vary clinical encounters throughout the day to limit this static posturing. And early intervention is really key. 
So we then developed an educational module, and this was based on the results of the systematic review. And what it attempted to do was to deliver this interactive learning environment for residents where they could self-reflect, and they could also then learn new habits in terms of positioning at the microscope. This work was first presented at the COS annual meeting last year as a poster presentation. Um, and then the educational module helped to um, identify risk factors predisposing to work-related MSK pain, and then attempted to provide tools um, for resident ophthalmologists so that they could learn how to properly position at the beginning of their careers. So the next steps for our research, we'd like to publish the systematic review. Improvement of the educational module, this is taken on by Dr. Timothy Ratzlaff and Dr. Mark Bona. Um, they're attempting to validate the module as well. Uh, Dr. Ratzlaff will speak on this later in the talk today. We'd like to extend this to residents across Canada and then even potentially to all ophthalmologists across Canada. Thank you for your time.